Unmute. We got four bodies. We're okay. All right. I'd like to call the morning uh, the meeting to <laughs> meeting to order. Um, let's see. This is okay. You're here for twenty uh, application twenty four zero five, right? The um, East Green Meadows. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, well. I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll change the uh, agenda a little bit. We'll take care of these folks first. So you waited, I would appreciate that. Okay, so we'll take a look at application 2405. And that is here um, to be accepted. Now we need some, uh, we, it's good you showed up. We need information. Um, there is no impact to the wetlands with your second half of the development. The um, right here, twenty-four oh five impact to the wetlands. Yeah, for the record, Guy Heskett. Um, I'm sorry. For the record, my name is Guy Heskett. Um, yeah, there are no direct wetlands impacts as part of the proposal that we have. Okay. With that information, I'm going to recommend that we do not have um, the need for a public hearing. So this application you already accepted. This is before you for consideration tonight. Has it been accepted? It was already accepted, yeah. I don't, I don't know the specific date. Um, yeah, this is for approval. Thank you. No. Yeah, it's under new business. Yeah. Hold on, let me go back. I, know, I do not believe this has been approved. We no, no, it. tonight would be. No, we never accepted it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I can't hear you, Amanda. You didn't have an April meeting, and so I think you didn't accept this one, and you didn't accept the other application from the town because because the April meeting was skipped. I think George is correct. I don't think yeah. you accepted no. either of these. That's the why they're under new business, not under mm -hmm. Thank you, because I spent the afternoon tracing these things. Right, so the application was submitted in March. So so the... the yes, yeah, so we were going to accept it in April. Right, so you can't make a decision on anything within 15 days of the data received because of the. Received it yet? That it's, was we. It's, it's deemed received 30, at the next regularly scheduled meeting or 35 days. So, essentially, 35 days after March 28th, it was received. And I think your understanding is that this would be pr presented tonight. Correct. That's correct. So the the application is received by statute. This is great. Now, here's my logic. We were supposed to receive it in March, like you just said. Mm -hmm. It's all, it was on the agenda. Um, or no, it came in in March. It was on the agenda for April. April's meeting got canceled. Correct. Stop. So this meeting mm -hmm. is the first meeting we've been able that we can discuss. Can we formally receive it? Statute says that the application is received at the next regular meeting or 35 days. All right. So if you canceled the April meeting, when that 35 day uh, kicks off, it's received. So the so okay. March 28th plus 35 is the date of receipt. I understand that. So that's how. Glad you guys showed up. Here we go. Um. Okay. Well, we're ready for your presentation then. And uh, you you gave us the thumb drive, but I don't know which file you want me to bring yeah, up. Uh, yes, I can. Let's do the one that says. These are these. Are you going kind of backwards or? Yeah, we're doing. Yeah, because the um, part, part the partial set. Partial set. Yeah. Okay. Right here. Let's see. <laughs> okay, just for the boards, just for the commission's info, this is the second half of the development 
uh, was um, 2302, the Bramble Bush um, Circle. So you, uh, this is tied in directly to CC 2302, right? Um, sort of, yeah. Not where, sorta, it is. Where's 2302? Now, there's a, I have a problem with the way 20 CC 2005, the East Granby Meadows application is, it lists all of the, the abutters. Well, the problem is the abutters list is all of the whole thing, yeah. including the abutters on 2302. No, well, they can't, the 2302 abutters can't also be on this other one. Yeah, let me explain the reason for that. Okay. okay. Subsequent to, the lot has been, the two lots are merged, they're now a single development lot. So therefore, we're looking for a approval of the detailed site plan for the southern portion, which is East Grammy Meadows, which is part of the entire parcel, which includes the former Bramble Bush Village and the former East Grammy Meadows. Okay. It's now one developed lot. Now. As in the assessor's record. So by default, all of the abutters that are around that one larger lot that has to be explained in the application. That's the first time I've ever heard that. I'm not questioning it. If that's what yeah. happened, fine. I'm, I'm here to explain it now because um, well, I, just, I would like yeah. 2405 to be revised to reflect that it's doing the whole enchilada. Okay. Now the question is: Is what do we do with 2302? Do we cancel it? You can't do anything to the previous applications because you've already rendered a decision on them. So you can't adjust any of the... So how can we combine them? You don't need to. It's just a, This is a separate right. scope and review. Yeah. So, okay. What you just said is what I said in the beginning. This has to reflect a separate uh, application. Now it can reference like the, the soil analysis and all that that are appropriate. That That's fine. Fair game. But it gets back to this abutters list. Wait, but George, are you saying this half already got approved, so now we really yes. are only talking about this half? Yes. But he's trying to say this is out. I, I understand that. But what we've just find what we just found out, this was approved. We can't do anything with it now. That means we can't add this to that. That means this has got to stand by itself. If this stands by itself, it's got. Yeah, Mr. Chair, if I can explain. What, what we're asking this commission to approve are a number of regulated activities that are taking place on a portion of the now combined parcel. So the previous application that you approved as a weapons commission was for a separate parcel of land, which was the Bramble Bush parcel. Yes. Subsequent to that approval, the lots have legally been merged, so now we have one large lot with approval of the of the activities on the northern portion of that large lot, which happens to be the former Bramblebush Village parcel. Now we are looking for a site plan and, I'm sorry, a permitted regulated activity on the southern portion of the larger combined parcel. I understand. So it is that. a separate approval we're looking for since, since the, the north activity is already been approved. Now we're looking for approval of the southern activity. Okay, and I repeat my comment before the application. CC 2405 does not in any way state what you just did. I'm not questioning what you're doing. That's fine. Let's, but we got to make sure the paperwork matches sure. with what the hell we're going to do. Yeah, and I, and I want to get, I would defer to staff. I think when, when we had a conversation with Robin and the town and Turkey, it, it, in my opinion on that was that they were under the impression that this was procedurally correct, the way that we were approaching I disagree. So they reference in the application that the portion of the project that is under the review for this phase is 26.29 acres, and then they state 54.94 acres is the total area. Hey, so but that's not what we're doing. That's exactly what you're doing, because this is essentially an, a phased approach to the project. Yes. Because it's one parcel, all of the activities, gen all the requirements generated by parcel lines, including abutters, 
now reference everything, but the scope of your review is related to activities associated with what we can call phase two. So we're not amending anything as related to what was previously approved under what we can call phase one. Correct. But because the parcel is one now when it was previously two, something like a butters have to include everybody All right. because the parcel line has been dissolved. Nice our tail here. We're going to leave this thing, that, the abutters list alone. I want a statement in this application under purpose and description of proposed activity explaining exactly what's happened. It actually, it says the development will be interconnected with Bramble Bush Village and will share a clubhouse pool and maintenance buildings. So, so they, what? That's not what we're looking at. He's saying we're going to have the whole thing as one one um well, it's this, been legally merged well this, this just no, I mean, no. please wait please okay i think there's there's, there's two things here if, if i were for example i had let's say i had a hundred acre parcel could you move up closer please let's say i had a hundred acre parcel and i was proposing an activity that only that only was for a, a small portion of that, like say five acres along a roadway or something like that. I would come into this commission and I would make an application for a wetlands or open review area impact within that envelope of my development. And you would permit only that activity that I'm looking for. You wouldn't give a blanket permit for the whole 100 acre site because you're permitting not the site, you're permitting an activity that happens beyond that site. So that's what we're here to do tonight is to have you assess and review impacts for the phase two portion, which is only development on the southern part of the larger parcel. Which exactly. Why can't you make that statement just as you explained? I think I did in the, in the application. That's my opinion. That, that, that's really clear. It's a regulated activity for the southern portion of the project. Okay. It, 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 Maybe in my explanation, show me the plans that we have, it'll clarify what we're proposing. And if we need to make any modification for wording to that, we certainly can as part of the condition of approval. This will be integrated into the previously approved Brample Bush Village to form a single development. Yeah, we're not proposing any additional impacts on the northern portion. We've already Understood. determined for those. I, I, we're not doing anything more. I'm going, to, I'm going to discuss this with Robin. I, I don't agree with it, but let's keep going. So one of the things that could be done is we could have the applicant add to the, to the final plans a detail that just basically takes that piece that you have in the first, first sheet here. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if it's not on there. Um, you could add a detail even to this, to the plans to, to just depict total project area, phase one, previously permitted with the and reference the permit number. You could add that to to as a to your detail sheet. I think that's pretty simple. And we would we would be happy to have that as a condition of approval. Right. Okay. So it would I think indicate that would address it. Yeah. yeah, that would. The fa and phase that's line. certainly something we should do. I think that's more technical and minor in nature. But I don't consider it minor. I mean, you guys come from a different perspective. I understand that. All right, let's yeah, go. I, I, we would certainly be comfortable with that. Well, let's. Okay. So you, you agree to make that mod uh, change on the drawing? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right, there's one commitment. Okay. Okay, let's let's have the presentation then. All right. Again, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. For the record, my name is Guy Heskett. I'm a licensed professional engineer. I'm a principal at the Heskett and Associates. And our corporate offices are located at 6 Creamery Bliss, right here in the center of East Brandy. Um, so we're here uh, tonight to request the um, permit to conduct regulated activity on uh, the what was formerly known as East Grandy Meadows. Um, the East Grandy Meadows parcel, uh, as I mentioned, um, consisted of 26.29 acres. Um, it, that was, at the time we had our original application, 
um, for the Brandon Bush Village, they were two separate parcels. As I mentioned, they have since been merged into a 54.94 acre combined parcel. We came before you last year, it was almost a year to the day um, where we requested a permit to conduct regulated activity on the Bramble Bush Village portion. As part of that, we presented in the overall package, what you see here is a master plan, which showed um, uh, two uh, phases of the development, the Bramble Bush Village, which is on the north, and East Cranberry Meadows on the south. Those were originally approved back in the mid to late um, 2000s. Um, Mr. Wilson owned the property. He had come in and gotten some approvals on there. As you're all aware, the infrastructure was constructed and the, the area was essentially left abandoned. You see all the white PVC pipes sticking up in the field over there, top soil strip. So a number of improvements were done <clears throat> way back when, which included the infrastructure, included uh, boxing out the roadways, putting in the utilities of the gas, I'm sorry, not gas, the electric, water service, sanitary sewers, um, telecommunications. And they actually, on Bramble Bush Village, um, put the binder course of payment. And then as that work was being done, they started to work on East Granby Meadows, and they did essentially the same thing. They put in the infrastructure for the electric, uh, the uh, storm drainage, sanitary sewers, the water service, and uh, they brought the roadway up to process um, material. They never did a binder for them. If you go out there today, you'll see that the roadways are all uh, boxed in, uh, partially constructed, almost completely constructed in a very important village. So the combined parts that you're looking at here um, is what consists of the 54.94 acres. Now we're looking for um, a permit to conduct regulated activity for the phase two, which is the East Cranberry Meadows portion, which essentially is um, from the connector road that we have connecting the two parcels to the south, which includes uh, the roadways that you see on, on the map. The uh, area is bordered to the north by the Windsor Rotten Gun Club. Uh, to the west, Shelton's Brook is located in residential areas uh, further to the west of that. To the south, there's a business parcel that abuts Rainbow Road. Uh, you can see on the map, Rainbow Road is uh, just to the uh, to the south of uh, the yellow line, which is the parcel boundary. And then to the east is East Street. And you'll see there's a little notch out there where there's a couple residential homes. And then further to the east of that are some more single family units. Very similar to what we're proposing building these Cranberry Meadows. They're standalone single family units, about the same size and cluster configuration. You go to the next slide. Uh, so phase two, we're looking at here. Um, that's what you're looking at for phase two. And what it consists of, uh, what we're proposing is uh, 48 separate dwelling units, which are simplex units. The original approval was for a total of 46 units, which consisted of six duplex units and the balance were simplex. That was under the approval from 2000. I think nine or so. Um, we're going to leave the infrastructure in place. We're going to finish the roadway, utilize the existing drainage, which consists of uh, two detention basins, one on the um, south west corner, developed area, and then one um, almost on the on the borderline of the phase one, which is um, water quality basin number four. And then there is some drainage that will drain directly to East Street and under, underneath East Street in a separate culvert and discharge adjacent to where the town drainage is. So I put this little map together here to show in green I have what were the wetlands that were delineated back when the project was first approved. And that was back in 2004, 2005. Bill on um, Moeller was the soil scientist of record, and he delineated these wetlands that actually went before your commission for the wetland boundary amendment, and that was the basis of the approval for the construction that was done. Um, subsequent to the approval and the previous approval by this commission, uh, some of the work was done out in this field area that included some earthwork and some infrastructure improvements. And if you see that little long skinny sliver of green that runs east-west along there, that 
has actually been impacted and was filled in back in 2008 or so. So that little finger of wetlands is really no longer a well there. And the reason we know that is because we had our own expert, Anthony Zamba, who's seated in the back here, the available to answer questions if you have any. He went out and he took a look at the previous delineations, and then he commented <coughs> Those delineations were substantially correct. His conclusion was that they were, except for that really long skinny finger there, because those were previously impacted. So even though you see that as being a wetland resource, that has been impacted, and the open review area you see around there, which is the orange line, it's located 100 feet from that wetland boundary. That represents the area of upland review disturbance that we have. Um, so those are the activities. We're going to focus on activities that have taken place within the, you know, those areas, and, and so you can make an assessment as to um, if we're being protected to those resources or not. Just keep in mind that that finger, the long skinny finger there, has been impacted, and characteristically that is no longer um, well in your source area. So a couple things that we're going to do. We are going to enlarge um, the existing stormwater drainage basin. Michelle, can you go to the next, the next slide? Go to the next one. I didn't include the entire plan set on this presentation, but we have in the plan. So, yeah. Oh, thank one you. More. Uh, one more. <laughs> okay. So this plan you have in front of you represents the grading plan. And this is the sort of the northern portion of the lower river. You can see along the northern boundary, there's a six buildings that you see there. That's Those are in Bramble Bush. Those are areas that have already been approved. The detention basin that's just to the west and south of those is the detention basin that's part of the phase one. Adjacent to that, um, sort of a little banana-shaped basin, that is an existing water quality basin that was constructed back in the late 2000s. We are going to have some impact on that because we're going to enlarge that slightly. We're going to take some material along the northern and eastern boundary of that basin and increase the storage capacity of that basin. And that's taking place within the upper region. South and east of that, the original plan called for the construction of, yeah, can you scroll that down a little bit, Michelle? The original plan called for the construction of a drainage swale running along from a southeast to a northwest direction to capture stormwater runoff that was coming from the backyards and rooftops of the buildings that are located adjacent to it and convey that water into the stormwater basin. Is that the set of lines? Kind of L shaped going up from the bottom. Yeah, the left. exactly. It's okay. kind of a, you can that's, kind of see it diagonally across the stage. So that's a swale going down. It actually goes down, but as it goes down, down towards it goes the down, house. It's down into the basin. So it goes down towards the houses? No, nope, the other way. It goes from the houses up into the basin. How's water going to flow up? Sorry, I'm not understanding. From here, up. high south, low north. <clears throat> it, starts, um, it starts here, and you can see the arrows, it flows that way. Oh, okay. So, so that was the, the original approval that this commission granted for the project under um, Mr. Wilson's application included that same grain of swale to take runoff from behind the home and put it into that catch basin. I'm sorry, that detention basin. So we're going to actually build that because that portion never got built back in 2000. And now they did the original construction. Um, and then if you go a little bit further to the south and east on that, we have these drawings here? Yeah, that would be on sheet GR-1. Oh, the next one. Oh, the whole next one. And to the east, just to the, to the low, or left side of that page. There you go, yep. And then you'll see there's another swale there um, that as a continuation of the swale I just showed you, a portion of that swale flows to the north of the water quality basin four, and then another portion flows south into the water quality basin five. Water quality basin five is the existing water quality basin that's there now. 
and we're going to take some runoff from the periphery of the project and create it into that water quality base. Those were original designs that were on the original approval that we're going to maintain. And the reason we're doing that is so that we can take that runoff, run it into our water quality basins, and provide a level of treatment before it's discharged uh, into the adjacent, which on this map is shown uh, directly to the west. You'll see in how fall there that's labeled. The outlet structures on the basin were built back in the late 2000s. We're going to maintain those. We're not doing any work. The only thing we're going to do different on those is the, the flared end sections that are outfalling uh, adjacent to the, to the wetlands to the west and the wetlands associated with Melvin's Brook. We are going to put new concrete flared end sections on them. For some reason, when they built them, they put the plastic flared end sections, which deteriorated into the soil falling into them. We're going to put um, concrete flared end sections with just a little modest riprap protection to supplement the existing riprap that's there. So. That work is taking place again in the upland review areas adjacent to the wetlands, no direct wetlands impact. And you can see on that map, you can see the delineation between the wetlands and the uplands. And then you can see the darker line that, that pierces uh, the quality and water quality basin number five. That's the upland review. So the activities within the upland review area include repairing the two stormwater outfalls, the flared end sections. That are already there, a very modest amount of work that'll be done, small equipment, put the new flare net sections in, restore some vegetation, put the riprap around them, and just leave it alone. Those areas are all stable. There's no actual work proposed in water quality based on number five other than shaping the swales that drain into it. And then, Mike, if you can look to the, to the, uh, the so slide above that. So you're saying it's currently that size with grass on the slopes? Yes. Yeah, that's already that's already um, very stable. There's grass growing there. It's been stable for a while. Yeah, and then the um, is it filled with water, or there's not enough pavement to collect water, like now? It, 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 it gets a little bit, but not not a whole lot. Um, so you'll see on if you can zoom in on the western side of that, so you can see the the wetlands and the upland review area and the limits of. So there, the activities that take place, there is some. The construction of the units within the 100 foot upland review area and construction of that swale. But the important thing to remember is those are areas that were previously cleared and earthwork was done. So they were already disturbed during the initial construction because they paired it. The only thing they didn't do is they didn't build the houses, they didn't put the swale. So we're going to just went in part of the swale, recreate it slightly. And then put the units in there. And then we'll convey that runoff to both the retention basin to the north, which is called Platinum Basin 4, and the retention basin to the south. But you have sediment erosion control all along that yeah, side. Yeah, if you go to the next slides, too, from down. Like, yeah, you go down. Yeah, so I do have the next set in your series is, I think, your plan and profile sheets, which really aren't pertinent to wetlands. But I do have the erosion control plans, yeah. which you see here. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, that's great. It's still great. Not happy. Yeah, I think that's your <clears throat> so so this is the erosion control plan you see. And and what we have are a number of measures that we're proposing, which include permanent measures, and those are installation of the flare end sections, which are hard structure, installation of the of the rip wrap. Um, outlet protections, once you put those in, they're permanent, um, they stay out. And then temporary measures include um, use of sediment logs, which are like straw coilers. We have those and perimeter. So right here, we're building on this corner and on the downstream side, on the edge of like what was previously disturbed, we have a row of silt fence. And then we protect the, that area down gradient from any earthwork activities. So the soap fence is put in immediately. What we do is we grade the uh, swale, and then that takes any of the runoff that comes into the swale, puts it immediately into, into the uh, tension basin, so it doesn't end up going in or adjacent to the wetland. And then in the swale itself, we've got other measures. We've got um, the center logs at 50 foot on center spacing to slow down runoff and trap that. Um, any potential sediments that are going in there. We've also got erosion control blanket, 
which you've seen as a that straw matting that you put in, and when you see that, put the straw matting, and that does two things. It helps provide a moist environment for the grass seed to pop very quickly, and it reduces velocity of runoff that goes through the soil and then also impact the raindrops on the soils. So any of those areas that you see that are shaded there, even around the basin where we're doing some additional um, excavation and large the basin, <clears throat> all those slopes are going to be fitted with erosion control blanket and immediately seeded with the conservation mix that provide more stabilization. And then up, up gradient of the swale, we have an additional silt fence to trap any material that is coming from construction of the units before it gets to the swale. So we have a, a sort of redundant method of trapping potential sediments there. And then again, on the there's one little piece of storm drainage we're going to reconstruct here to get around one of the units because we ship with the units around. There's an existing pipe that's in there. That, that little piece of pipe will come out. We'll put a new pipe in there, a new outfall. So that that'll be done very early in the pro in, in the process, so that that'll be stabilized before any construction starts on the units, so we can get that all stabilized. And if you go, and then also during construction, we're going to have silt um, silt sacks in all the catch basins to prevent um, any runoff that's in the almost finished roadway and the peripheral periphery areas around the roadway. And, uh, We'll see some more sedimentation and erosion control devices. And I'll focus mo mainly on the ones that are in the upper review area. If you do have them throughout the site, you'll see <clears throat> even up um, along East Creek, some swales that were part of we have, we have some <clears throat> sediment logs in there, silt fence erosion controls around the, the, the perimeter along the southern boundary, but right along this area here, which is the upper review area, same thing. You've got swales going in. Sorry, <clears throat> it's. Yeah. We've got some swales going in, so we're going to have redundant um, erosion control devices. I think on the gradient plan there. Just jumping around. File size. So the same thing. We've got silt fence on the downstream side, supplemented by um, sediment logs. Sediment logs at um, uniform spacing in the swales themselves. Erosion control blankets in the swales. Um, and these are all. What are recommended by the Connecticut DEP as far as the erosion control manual is concerned. So we do follow that standard in addition to um, your town requirements. Um, on the site itself, you'll notice, uh, just like we did for phase one at the request of the town engineer, uh, the little drainage swales or, or grading sags, I guess, between units, we're going to have some erosion control blankets and some silt uh, sediment logs in there too. As these units are built to, to control sediment, so we're going we're to basically control it throughout the site, not only adjacent to the wetlands and the upland review areas, but throughout the entire site, um, to make sure that um, you know we don't have you know deposition getting into the resource areas. And following our, our construction and during construction, if there are any sediments that actually make their way into these water quality basins. Obviously, that's the second line of defense or third line of defense, and that material will be removed and stabilized during construction and certainly following construction when everything's all stabilized um, so that those detention bases will be restored to the existing condition. So, yeah. <clears throat> Finish? <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I had a question. Wait a minute. Hang on a second. <clears throat> so I just want to reiterate that. That the erosion control plan that you see here as part of our package meets the Connecticut DEP standard and best management practices. In, in my professional opinion, it, it's it's adequate and in providing protection um, for the the wetland resource areas. Now, in our package too, we do have in the note sheet, just like we did in phase one, we have an operation maintenance plan post construction and. Um, I'm sure if you read that, you're familiar with that. But essentially, what it is is we're going to have uh, do street sweeping out there to minimize um, any any um, sediments that are in the roadway that could ultimately make their way into these water quality basins. We have a program to inspect. <clears throat> excuse me. Just realize them. Like the last day or two, these allergies are getting to me. You know, I'm trying to uh, get some anti allergy medicine. Pardon, pardon me. So the um, 
Uh, that will include inspection of the catch basins and cleaning the sumps on, on an annual basis. There's also a program for making sure that these water quality basins are maintained properly. Um, they will not be mowed other than um, twice a year maximum. And keep the woody vegetation out there so that it doesn't impact it. But we want to let Mother Nature and um, the natural, the vegetative growth take take hold uh, both in the bottom and the sides of these basins. <coughs> And, and the project itself, um, we are only going to have manicured lawns in the center and around the backs of the units. In any of the areas that are um, where you see those divergent swales or those interceptor swales we have, those interceptor swales will be um, a conservation seed mix, both in the bottom of the swale and on the western side of it. So that those are no hole areas. Any, any disturbance on the western side of those swales, again, will be... Um, thank you. <laughs> Anything on the western side of the swales um, will be a conservation fixed material, similar like we have proposed for phase one. So the idea is get in, build it, get the swales working, get the lawns manicured from the swale to the backs of the house, just so somebody has grass strip they can walk around to get around their house, and then let Mother Nature take over anything that's to the west of that, including in the detention basins. So as part of our analysis also, we did an extensive hydrologic analysis, hydrologic model. We modeled it after the analysis that was done on the original approval, and then for the Soil Conservation Service methodology, we used the original baseline parameters. In other words, the existing condition, we didn't look at the existing conditions as they stand today. For our baseline, we looked at the existing conditions before development back in 2005. And then we did, using the updated, most recent NOAA 14 Atlas, precipitation Atlas 14 precipitation data, Running in our model, um, there's a quite an extensive report that was submitted to the town staff. I spoke to Tom Grimaldi about it this afternoon, so he's reviewed that. Wait a minute, excuse me, you have submitted that analysis to Tom? Yes, yeah, that was about a month ago he submitted it, and he's, he's had an opportunity to review that. Had has, it, have you, has he responded? I think his comments, he, he does have comments that he has for, for the record for staff tonight, my understanding. They just came in today, so they're, they were printed for you. Okay. Okay. Thanks for doing that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the other thing that I did submit also, and um, I, I believe it's the it's requested of this commission on many applications is a review of section seven point six of your of your wetlands uh, regulations. So I submitted a narrative that addresses all of those items. Yes. Um, so that that was included as part of the record. And in addition to that, because at the previous um, application there were concerns for potential uh, agriculture activities and impacts of soils. I submitted the, the same information for the record just because that same information is valid to the southern portion of the city. The application, as you described, is very well handled in the, the uh, drawings and the application. I think it is, Mr. Chairman. I think yes, I mean, it's really I, well described. That. I, I don't I wanted to give an sorry to yell at you, but no, it's a good it's a good thing. I appreciate that. Now, oh, you more? Yeah, just a couple of real quick things if I can. So, towns, we, we received two reports from town staff. One was from Robin, and one was from Tom. And I just we did review those, and I do have just a couple quick comments on Robin's. I want to verify something. Um, in her report, there's two things. She indicates on page two. The last paragraph, the figure. <clears throat> he says that there are no disturbances proposed between the blue and yellow lines. And I, I don't want to speak for her, but I think what she means there is that beyond the what disturbance were previously approved. So I believe that was her intent. I don't want to speak for her, but that's my interpretation. I just wanted to enter the interpretation to the record because. Obviously, there are going to be disturbances within those lines, but again, as I testified, those disturbances, that those areas have already been disturbed during the activities that took place in the late 2000s, um, 2010s. Um, and then also on, on the third page, the first paragraph of those pages, she indicates that um, staff has reviewed the contents of the responses and the wetlands delineations. Here by Anthony Zemba, dated December 12, 2023. 
Wait a minute, hold this. Where are you? Oh, okay, the first paragraph. I yeah. just wanted to clarify that, I think I and I think the record's clear that Henry Moeller did the original wetlands delineations back in 2004, 2005. But Mr. Zemba reviewed those wetlands and had commented to the had commented to the um, veracity of the delineation. But basically, in his report, Anthony says he's in agreement with them, with except for that narrow strip. Um, which has already previously been impacted. He doesn't believe those are wet anymore. But rather, again, than us rehashing that, we're, we were acting conservatively and showing those elements and showing the impact here. Um, so that was, those are the only comments I had on Robin's report. We take um, no exception with the conditions that she outlined and then uh, Mr. Galani's report. Again, I think they're all minor in nature, and we take no issue with the uh, recommendations of his. Well, Mr. Chair, but having said that, um, I, it's probably best if I just conclude my initial presentation and answer any questions you may have. And again, Mr. Zemba's here. If anybody has any questions regarding wetlands delineation, and the applicant is representative is here. If there's any other questions, thank you. Can you pull up drawing EC2, please? Is that a road along the bottom there? It looks like a road adjacent to that little infill <clears throat> wetlands there. Oh, yeah. You know what that is? Yeah, what is that? For the record, that is an old railroad ballast. I think it's either ah. a railroad or a trolley. Okay. Well, so there used to be, if you look on the old aerial photos, if you look, if you drive up mm -hmm. Turkey Hill Road and oh, before you start going up the hill, yeah. there used to be a, a yeah. fill slope that went down and it went through our property where our office is. Across the field, and then it ended up splitting that parcel. So, I was just worried about yeah. that affecting drainage, but it's, I mean, it's nothing. No, it's done. Pretty, so you, it, you know, I looked at some old aerial photos from 1934, and it was, it was gone by then. It was used like in the late 1800s, early 1900s. But the grades are shown on this drawing like there's a road there. Well, if there is, it's, if there's a ballast. There's a bump. It's, it's, okay. Yeah, it's bumped on both sides. It's been breached so that there's the, the, the uh, channel goes through. I mean, it's three feet. It goes from 164 to 168. Yeah, so it's four feet. It's an old ballast, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's missing in the middle. You can take a chunk of it. So the water can go where it wants. Oh, yeah, it goes right through there. Okay. The farmer that started working on that after the railroad was gone in the early 1900s, they sure that. Um, I also had a question about the catch basin. Um, I, I heard in my own head, a contradiction, um, and I just want to verify it for myself, um, that are we leaving the catch basin as is or excavating it to make it bigger? The, the, the water quality basin five we're leaving as is, mm -hmm. with the exception of the transition of the swales that bring brought up into water quality basin five, water quality basin four, we are going to make it a little larger. We're enlarging, uh, there's two separate ones. That's yeah, different. we're enlarging the northern and Eastern. Oh, and the western part of where the wetlands are. Yeah. Western, Completely yeah, different to the side. West of the western portion. Thank you yeah. for clarification. I had had a question which Mike answered. Um, the Are patios allowed to be in the 100 foot upland review area, which and the edges of the houses, which apparently they are, and they're right just right at the edge of it. Um, what was the answer? Yes, they are allowed. No, it, they're, and then, are, do you know what the, the double red line, people guessed maybe it was a porch setback, the double red dotted line on the plans? Um, yeah, those are for zoning. One of them is a building setback, and the other one I think is a parking setback or something. Mm -hmm. Okay, so nothing yeah, to do with us. Okay, um, just to clarify you have seen the engineer's re report you have no problem with any of his comments um his review comments yes we are in possession of that and we take no exception to okay he, he and, is asking and, uh, but, excuse me and the engineering conditions of approval uh, there that's basically boilerplate okay yeah we have no issue with this okay fine thank you okay go on. Co comment number two to remove and replace the top three inches of aggregate of the road and that's a pretty big job 
Yeah, we want to do it right. So I, I know what Tom's concern is on that. But it'll um, come unbonded, the road surfaces? Yeah, because the road has been there for so long that you sometimes get finer sediments. Or oh, yeah. So, yeah. so there, may, there may be ways you can take it. And Scratch it, loosen it up. Yeah. But otherwise, that's kind of a big task. Okay. <laughs> Any other comments? All right. This is going to get complicated. First of all, there's a problem with Robin's letter that's not dated. To find a date on it, I will apologize. Now, there's also two, um, I don't want to say corrections, that's not the right word, clarifications that have to be made to it. So, what I'm suggesting, somehow we will approve or we'll vote to approve this application subject to a reissue or a formal issue of Robin's letter and what was the other thing? Oh, uh, and um, the conditions in um, the town engineer's letter. Does anybody have a problem with this in theory? Sounds good. You okay, Mike? Yeah, it's the only memo from Robin in the record for this application. Uh, so hey, hey. You can reference it. Yeah, you go to court and try and argue that one. I'm pretty comfortable on that. I'm not. I'm good. But we can call it whatever, and, and I mean, we can't. Not, how else can I identify it? It's a memo from Robin to the Inland Wetlands Commission regarding a application CC 2405. Now she writes another one. If you can't, once you issue a decision, the matter's been closed. Oh, no. You can't supplement the record once a decision has been issued. So um, issue it with the date, I'm sure. No, That's put the date. Now, um, you, but like I said, it's a very good design package you put together. I mean, uh, it's, it's noteworthy. All right. But what I'm going to say is I'll make a motion. Now, this is in theory. I'm not doing it. Is there public comments? Yes. I didn't hear you. So, uh, is there public comment? There's no public forum. For an application? If we had, if there's no public forum. Why? Do you want to make a comment? Um, I just have a question about it. And um, it's not necessarily for you guys, but for the commission um, on that section that was wetlands that they said was filled in. Um, what are, like, does the town follow up with that as far as, you know, the fact that somebody filled in wetlands? And I, I would assume that we would want to follow up with somebody now, filling in wetlands. You know, think about, Amanda, think about what you just asked. This happened back in 2005. You know who the property owner was. Oh, jeez. It's... It was Wilson. Right. So I just wondered if the town no. followed back up with that, or do you just say, oh, well, it was filled in, now you can build on it. Oh, have you met Mr. Wilson? Yes. Would you like to go and ask him about? No, I'm asking what the process is no, for we, that. No, we won't. You just, if somebody fills it in, oh, well, and you just. Well, if, if it was. Not you, I'm just asking like what, what, how you normally handle that. Normally, we would just, if it was done recently, like you know, two years ago, yes, we would follow up and do that. But going back to 2005, okay. and what, what Mr. Yeah. Chairman, if I may have a point of clarification, is the original <clears throat> permit that was granted by this commission showed grading over that area, so that was a permitted activity. So he didn't do anything that he was not permitted for when that was done back between 2008 and 2011. They gave him permission, he and had a permit to fill that small section of well, and so. Wait a minute, I don't know what you just said. It says in, in, in his report, he indicates um, filling of this wetland per the previously approved site plan. In other words, they right. said well, that, That's an answer to Amanda's yeah. concern. Well, it, well that, it, no, that, it, that answers it, my concern. I, I don't like it, but I understand. No, and, and I think the other thing that I would add is that 
correct they're showing it correctly on here because even though they're saying it doesn't qualify they're treating it as a wetland so if it was done years ago a lot of times what we would look for now is that they go back to sort of a native soil to to so that they can't just say well it's not wetland anymore we don't have to treat it as one we're going to ask them to go beyond that to get to that native soil so that we can see what's there and then treat it just like they have so um, they're not going to get credit for having it filled in and picking up that buildable area. If it's an active violation or there's there's something associated with a site plan, then the town could ask for remediation and do issues, cease and correct orders and, and the whole nine yards. Um, but at this point, it would be shown here, and you'd correct me if I'm wrong, but they're they're reflecting it on the plans as if, as if it were. Um, so they're not really gaining anything by it having been filled in, even though it was permitted. Okay. Getting back to what I was going to say, um, we can improve this. Now, there are engineering review comments. He wants changes to drawings. Um, the boilerplate we don't have to worry about. We need changes to Robin's memo. We can approve it subject to fulfilling these comments and can be reviewed by our designated agent that you don't have to come back to the next meeting. Now, does anybody have a problem with that? Do you want to include the additional condition that they add a detail to reflect the phasing that you talked about at the very beginning? Robin asked for that. Thank you. Remember, you wanted to clarify which part of the project was the subject to this review? I'm not going to get into that now. Oh, no. Tom Grimaldi asked for it. He said provide a phase line de delineation between okay. phase one That's, and two. That'll take care of it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Perfect. I mean, this is... I don't like this whole thing. Um, politically. Um, does any okay? So does nobody has a problem with what I just postulated for for the approval? No, okay. uh, everybody's okay. I don't know how uh, Robin can backdate her. She's got to reissue it. She reissue can't it. backdate it. Okay, She's well, got to cancel a new, it. A new memo. So yeah. this is contingent on another memo being written. Yeah. It'll just say Rev One with the date on it. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if she'll rub it. I don't know what that's How her she, problem. What she, there is a date that it was prepared. So all's all's we will do is notate on the file copy the date of the memo. Because we because we cannot reissue something after a decision. It, it, we wanted to make changes. It, you you he raised two two concerns. And so by and and if you are in agreement that that is just basically a, a an error in the memo. Then, then there's a consensus in this meeting and in the record that that's the case. We can't issue an, a revision to a document that's part of the record because- Come on now. You, <laughs> we read drawings, we read everything. Because, because that is, you're, you're taking a drawing and saying, I want you to do the following things. What you're asking is that we supplement the record with the same memo, just with, with a date. And the date's gonna reflect something that was done prior to. And these changes. So the changes you can do. I'm 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 talking. I'm, you're asking her to revise a memo that is part of the record that is is undated, and it, it's not the same as saying we want you to revise the plans to include X, Y, and Z, because it's the, the revised plans will have a date that they were revised. Robin's memo is going to have a date that may be April fifteenth, and we can't add a memo to the file. The date you're going to add it to. What's the date? I don't know. And that's the problem. So how are you going to say then, then this will go into the files and it will have a date? How are you going to put the date on that? Well, I'm trying to find the, the, the most politically correct way to say it doesn't matter if there's a date. I, there's only one memo in the file from Robin. It's this memo. There's going to be no confusion about it. We go back for another rev on this thing and we go through this whole enchilada again. And you, Robin issues another letter. But if it's recorded in the minutes? Right, it's all part of the record. It's part of the application. It's in the file. You're going in circles here. <laughs> no, no, this whole thing, no, no. Um, 
Robin's memo does not need to be revised because the conditions that she has suggested stand as written. The only concerns are related to her narrative commentary, which are not part of your decision. They impact your decision, but they are not part of the motion. That doesn't even make sense. If it doesn't make sense? It's part of our decision. It's, but it's not part of the motion. Robin's narrative comments are not part of your motion. Make it part of the motion because she has requirements in it that we want to incorporate. Right, and that's part of the draft motion. But the comments that he made about her, her general comments reflected of the dates and some of those other things, those are not part of your motion. I'll make it that. Okay. Mr. Hanson. I am trying to guide you on the procedure to make this decision, but you're arguing with me about semantics related to a staff report that are not part of your motion. They, they are part of the, the body of information that you make a decision on. Okay. Calm down. Take a drink. Calm down. <laughs> now, when these gentlemen leave, we're going to have a rather good discussion about how this was handled by the town. Okay. All right. But let's get these guys, you know, go have a beer someplace. All right. This, if I could just interject something. Please don't get involved in this. <laughs> You're a nice guy. I don't, I, <laughs> I don't, I'm okay with going forward. I mean, I kind of understand your concern, but I, All right. I don't think it should be a showstopper. Would you like to propose a draft approval? Like, a your Jennifer Franklin, I almost called him Jennifer. <laughs> if I went by Jennifer, he might agree with me. For makeup. I, I knew I was going to be flipping the drugs. So what do you want from, you want me to, what I want, the, the motion is part of the, the end of Robin's memo. It starts on page three. A draft motion has been provided. And so that is what you would incorporate. Condition nine references any required conditions of the town engineer, which is what brings in the May 1st memo from Mr. Grimaldi. And like a future when we got it. Right. Which is which is the it's your boilerplate conditions, I think for the most part, and then Tom has some additional the right to reconsider. Leaves us a, a back door open. What? Oh, yeah. That's boilerplate. That's boilerplate. That's in case they lie. This is not that issue. Oh, All right. Who would like to make the motion? I make that motion. No, they got to read it out. Oh, okay. Uh, motion to approve application CC number 2405 KFCR East Granby owner. LLC East Granby Meadows for activity within the Upland Review Area associated on Old Deerful Circle and Briarwood Circle with the following conditions. Do I need to read all the conditions? You can say one through. Conditions one through nine. nine. And do I need to read the next three paragraphs? Some more? Do you want me to read those all? No, 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 okay. no, 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 no. No, and the, the undated memo received from Robin that references the application. All right. Do I hear a second? Second. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. It's unanimous. You're okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. This we're going to. This we're going to. I haven't read this one. This one we don't. This thing was for the whole set. Thanks for coming, guys. Some drive. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll see you in the morning. I, 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 I think there's no sedimentation in the world. Mike, Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Okay. Have a good night, guys. Thank you all. Thanks. So, I mean, I, I take your point about that. You're, gonna, you're staying, right? I, I'm coming back. Yeah, but I assume you're going to do your administration, so I have a minute to have a question. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is the second half. All right. Now let's talk about this. Mike, I need your undivided attention. You always have it. This was handled. I don't like what it was 
what was done by putting it under new business. It should have been old business because we couldn't take credit for canceling the meeting. In other words, we were getting ready to, to formally accept it and proceed on, no, whether we were going to have a uh, um, public hearing or not. That got preempted by the fact that our next meeting got canceled. Therefore, we could not meet the 30 to 35 day criteria. Therefore, we had to go into the re formal review of this process, uh, this application. Any arguments? So the only thing that would have changed the, the course of the way this application was treated is if the commission decided to have a hearing. If you hadn't, we didn't get a chance to have a hearing. Well, that's how you opened the discussion this evening. Because it was here by your saying it was for approval. We already accepted it. You, you, so there's two things at issue. One, when it's received and when you can consider it. And two, if you can have a public hearing. The application is deemed received 35 days. We've covered that. But you have 65 days to determine and ultimately open a public hearing if you need to. So tonight the application was received and you were able to take action on it. If everybody got here and said, we're not comfortable with this, we need to have a hearing, you have 65 days from date of receipt to do that. So the commission could have decided tonight, we're not hearing it, we're not talking to you, we're scheduling a hearing. I, just, I disagree with that. We have the You can't disagree with it, it's statute. What about the 15-day waiting period? The 15-day waiting period is from date of receipt. Right. And date of receipt is 35 days from March 28th. So March 28th plus 35 is date of receipt. Date of receipt plus 15 is your hold. Tell me the date. Is What is the date of receipt for this? The, tell me the calendar date. We'll do that right now. So it was submitted on March 28th. Or the April the April first meeting, right? But it was received. It was submitted on March twenty eighth. So the date of receipt was the next regularly scheduled meeting, which would have been April, right? Or thirty five days, right? So the latest date of receipt would have been tomorrow. Uh, no, hold on. Your April meeting. What was the date of the April meeting? First. So your date of receipt was April 1st, because it's the next regularly scheduled meeting or 35 days, whichever is sooner. It's the third. So it was the third. third. Okay, I'm sorry. So date of receipt is April 3rd, plus 15 is April 18th. So you have until, you cannot statutorily issue a decision on the application until April 19th, because you have to hold 15 days from date of receipt to allow for an environmental or intervener to submit a petition. Um, so after April 18th, you can issue a decision. You don't have to. So at tonight's meeting, you were free to make a decision, but not required to. And you could have still chosen to hold a public hearing because you have 65 days from date of receipt to do that. Right. There was no, okay. We asked about whether there was any impact in the wetlands. There wasn't. Therefore, right. Well, we don't need to have a public hearing. Mm -hmm. But this, I, I, how can we be penalized when we have to cancel a meeting? You're not penalized. Yes, you are. How? Because when we, we could have had this as the receipt of it, mm -hmm. on through all that, then review it next month. The only thing that changed is that normally when you get it for receipt, you can't act. Tonight was the first time that you saw it in front of, with the applicant, and you, the only thing that changed was that you had the ability to act. Yeah, but that was because... The ability, not the obligation. Oh, 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 oh this ice is getting thin. You, no, okay, okay, let's, let's just... I'm sorry, but does the 35 days start It's it's the day after they hand it? Just it's 35, that. right. So it's upon submission, date of receipt is the next regular meeting or 35 days, whichever is sooner. And that is for every land use application submitted in the state of Connecticut, no matter what commission. 
All right. But and that's because if you cancel three meetings in a row, an applicant can just say, okay, I'll see you in August. So it puts the time clock into some type of perspective. And the 35 days is meant to capture, let's say you have monthly meetings and you have a five, month, five weeks or something, and you know they just want to get the clock started. But, um, all right. Can I ask you a question about that? Wait a minute, please. Then on the agenda, this should have been reflected. Okay. And it wasn't. I don't set I'm the agenda. I'm yelling but at you because I can't yell at Robin. You can yell at me all you want. Just know I might yell back. That's fine. <laughs> Free country. Well, and this is for Michelle to understand because you type it no, up. No, I don't want to get Michelle involved. Let me, can I, can I provide a little bit more of, of some background? Some of the procedural, some of the historic conduct of the commission over the last several years has not aligned directly with statute and FOI. Know that. Receipt of applications should literally be right. you saying, do we need to have a hearing? Yes or no. The applicant shouldn't be here. You shouldn't even talk to the applicant. So you feel more comfortable with receipt at a different meeting because you're used to getting to talk to the applicant. They were here because you could make the decision. And so they needed to be here to be prepared because you acted. But under normal receipt of application, you don't see the applicant. And so you just look at it and say, do we need to have a hearing? Yes, no, boom, you move on. Most commissions, that's a three minute conversation. You're uncomfortable because you're used to having the applicant here to discuss during receipt and then getting them back at a second meeting. Over you can't say no because that's how it happens. Usually that's what you do. They come in, you discern, you well, turn. I can't say you can't come in. How do I keep them out? Because if I tell them that they can't come in, you're going to tell me that you don't like what I'm telling you to do, like you're doing right now. So it's either. <laughs> if you feel that that's what you have to do to comply with the regs, mm -hmm. that's what we do. I'm not. I want to make sure we're in compliance. And so the best way to do that would be for receipt of applications. You do not have a, a, an applicant here. How can we do that? From now on, for receipt of applications, you will have no one here in the audience. You will simply discuss, is How there... How do we get them out? If somebody shows up, not like Amanda's... Well, you, cer you can certainly tell them to be here. or, or to They can attend. It's a public meeting, but you don't interact with them. You pretend like they don't exist. The only thing you do is say, do we, do we need to have a public hearing? Does this meet the criteria? Yes or no? If yes, you schedule it, and you don't discuss it at all but you're used to sort of litigating the merits of the application during that first meeting. Well, it's nice to have clarification to make sure we're not going down a road where we say, hey, and this is what I've been criticized before, we go down a road and we say, hey, we need a meeting, a public meeting. Mm -hmm. and then I, then they get turned around and say, hey, you guys are having too many public meetings. Now, well, well there's a difference between having too many having unnecessary public hearings and discussing the application. The problem is if you have a 15 minute discussion about the application and let's say you land on, we want to have a hearing. The last 15 minutes of discussion are not part of the record because you've, you've decided to have the hearing, which is at a subsequent meeting. So anybody that then attends that hearing is not afforded the ability to understand the discussion the commission had, which got them to having a hearing, which is why you don't discuss it other than, do we have a hearing? I agree. Right. But I also feel if we go down a primrose path here and we're, mm -hmm, well, let's talk to them. They know what's going on. They can tell us the technical business. Do we have a problem? We consider it, vote, and go on. Or we could ask our staff to let us know that. And that's why staff in the memos historically has told you whether they feel a hearing is necessary. Uh, well, I don't know if she put there. I don't think it's in her. In Robin's memos, no, I don't think it's in here. I'm, check it. I may be wrong. I don't remember seeing it. It is. It says this proposal shows no wetland impact. Is that your criteria for what that would? Well, I guess, I guess due to the previous approvals and no direct wetland impact, staff does not recommend a public hearing. Got it. Okay. That is on his, and she does that for both. We've okay. had this for two weeks, right? You, you sent this out? This is an April. This this one, which has all that information, is April 2nd memo. So whenever the packet went out. All right. All right. All right. Enough. Let's get started. 90% of the cases that go before land use courts in Connecticut get thrown back to commissions because of procedural issues. So if I'm speaking up, it's it's 
almost always because of a procedural thing. That's why we want you here. I am reinforcing. We want to make sure we are complying. But but what I don't do, and there's and there's then the strat there's strategy behind it is in the middle of an application, I'm not going to say, excuse me, Mr. Chairman, that is a procedural issue. Please don't do that because then I'm putting on the record that there's a procedural issue. So I will do my best to guide you, and I will do my best to interject when necessary. And when you say a procedural, yep, does that mean we have a regulation problem? Or are we handling this by some, I don't know what procedure else we have. All we have is regs. It could be that you're taking public comment when there's no public hearing. It could be that you're discussing an application prior to determining if a public hearing is necessary. It could be taking comment after hearing is closed. It could be any number of things. But my pushback is usually because I'm trying to guide you down the correct procedural path without putting a big fat highlighter around procedure. I went to 168 municipal land use meetings last year. This is unfortunately 90% of my time. <laughs> Mike, I'm, I'm not questioning your knowledge of the of the regs. Procedures, I don't know. But <laughs> I would say even more he knows because he goes to all these meetings. Yeah, I, I know. And, and we need the help. Please. Yeah. I'm, I'm not I'm, trying I'm, to I'm, shut you down or anything. I'm glad but, to run Let's wait. Um, all right, I got to talk to Robin. This thing is. Uh, I think you should get to this this, this uh, applicant's uh, presentation so she can go home. Go home. Yeah. I guess, uh, like, oh wait a minute! Wait a minute! Hold. <laughs> Time out. Okay. Now, I would like it uh, number two. Hey, Mike. Mm -hmm. Are you going to talk to Robin tomorrow? Uh, not tomorrow because she's still on vacation. But I will talk to her. I still don't like her and the lawyer making, I'm not going to say a deal, but committing to something and not telling me or putting it in her red, in her memo. I'm not sure what you're referring to. I'm not, I when were they agreed that this was a continuation of the prior application. It was not a brandy new application. CC. It is a brand new application. I, we're, can we, we need to roll. Well, this is eight. It's eight thirty at night, and I I've been traveling all day. Okay, wait a minute. Let's take care of this. It's this is going to be. I I I, I don't care. You didn't meet with Robin. You look at. Can I ask a question just for clarification? So, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. What are we going to do now? We got to get. <coughs> Okay, this is the land trust, 2402. Is that what you're talking about, Amanda? Uh, yes, it is a town application. All right, let me speak. You can add if I'm missing. This is, we have to issue a, 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 an application for the work. And I, um, on June 1st, 2022, we had an excellent presentation by Amanda Thompson and the town engineer that it went into very good details about what this pathway consists of, how it's designed, where it goes, and all that. And I'm, I'm going to sit, make the statement, and every, there, any comments we had were resolved. I don't remember any. Um, the only one I remember there was a... a concern about whether it was handicap accessible it was explained why it isn't but it can still facilitate or it could still handle um wheelchairs okay all right so we move on uh they started work unfortunately we let it drop me in particular i'll take the blame no application was requested or submitted now Robin yelled at me for another thing that in section 22A-32 of our famous law states that any person proposing to conduct a regulated activity upon any wetland shall file for a permit. Sound familiar? Sure does. Yes. And she's right. Therefore, and person, if you look up what a person is in the law, it goes on for, oh, 
that's it's fascinating reading. It's poor baloney, but anyway. So anyway, the moral of the story is, and this we got to take to heart. If the town is doing any work, we need an application. If there's wetlands involved. We have always assumed if the town does it, they, we don't need anything. We're wrong. All right, let's let's just get it out in the open. Um, so the, the town has put together a application. It's very sketchy, but that's what we need. Tonight, we have to vote to approve it. All right. Is this to receive it or to actually approve the application? <laughs> Do it whatever you want. Okay. So technically it's over the 35 days, so it was accepted, so now you can vote on it today. Okay. That, that's, thank you, man. That was very nicely said. Um, so I move that we accept, that we approve application CC2402 as presented. Um, to the commission on January, uh, June 1st, 2022. <clears throat> and the conditions one through six in noted in town planner memo dated April 23rd, 2024. You okay? All right. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, you want to, seriously, you're, you're bombing out. No, 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 I just didn't want to run in the procedural circles. We weren't getting anywhere. <laughs> I'd rather continue down the agenda. I'm okay with continuing down the agenda. Thank you. My Thank you, Amanda. Yeah. Now, you're happy? I'm happy. All right. Now we yeah. just need money. Well, that's, a, that's, that's unfortunate. I mean, problem, that's, I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful project. It is. Yeah. All right. Uh oh all right, let's go on. Minutes. Any comments on the 1-3 2024 minutes? Was that the last time you met? Was 1-3? You got February. it. Now you know why we're oh. trying to catch up. Oh, did I attend that meeting? I'm not sure. I can... no. no, you did not. So I cannot vote on these minutes. All right, that means we don't have a quorum. Uh, the vote. She can abstain. That's right. And if she abstains, she goes with the majority, so you can vote. See? An abstention um, abstention carries with the majority. Oh, that's... Love this guy. That is the statute. Okay. You can call the Freedom of Information Commission, Mr. Tom Hennick himself. <clears throat> I move to accept the uh, minutes of... Uh, the uh, meeting, um, town meeting from uh, our one three commission meeting one three twenty four, as submitted. I'll second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Okay, it passes. Thank you, Mike. This is what we need, you boy. Uh, I'm not going away anytime. All right. Here we open up another one. Um. Communication. Communications. Uh, we received the P and Z minutes of March 12th and a um, report from Robin on in April 2024. That was wait a minute. What was the subject of that? A memo from Robin. Yeah. Or it's the here. famous unpaid. All right. Not that. Okay, we just leave it. All right. Here's the problem one. Yesterday, Michelle received a new application, CC2406. Now, that was 430. Right. We can do. We can do nothing, and we have 35 days to formally receive and vote after everybody has a chance to look at the drawings. Why can't we just receive it tonight? Start we, our clock to. And we also, well, 
That's no commitment, right? We're just Once you receive okay, it. Okay, if we receive it tonight. We look at it between now and the next meeting. And vote, and then we have to vote whether there's a uh, need oh. for a public hearing. Right, so if you if you don't receive it tonight, then you, the, okay. the next meeting you have to decide and then you'd have to push it out a, another meeting if you wanted to have a hearing. We could give you the plans and you can look at the application and determine if a hearing is necessary. You looked at it enough to know I've that- I've looked at it okay. and I think- There's a hearing. Okay. It's a, it, so the purpose of the of the application is to construct an industrial use building with parking access drives, loading dock, and related infrastructure, a portion of which falls within the Upland Review. The total, uh, let me see if they have, they have um, 0.48 acres of Upland Review disturbance only, no wetland disturbance. Um, so I'm, given what we've just discussed, and, and how we're going to roll with this, I see no reason why you shouldn't at least look at it. If you feel completely uncomfortable about making the decision on the, the fly, then you can certainly push it. But this is how it would work sort of going forward. You get the application, you simply decide about a hearing, and you don't have anybody here to discuss it. Oh. So I would suggest we hand this out and you... Okay, well, wait a minute. Well, okay, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Let's... Robin's uh, memo, April 23rd, which is... We should delete that from the correspondence list because it's relevant to a, uh, to a specific application. Okay, got it. All right. Specifically said there are no direct wetland impacts associated with this activity. So what we can do? It's that's not this project. That's something else. Ooh, that's the land. That's our path. That's the land trust or the okay. town path. I got the wrong. So there's probably no correspondence from Robin on this. Part. Right. This was just dropped off yes. yesterday. Yes. Oh, you're, you're right. Oh, late. All right. Let's let's give this a shot. Oh, I love is this a pro is this a project we've seen before, or this is brand new? Brand new. In a new All area. Right. Now. Do you want to open it and walk us through it and kind of no, tell everybody? No, I'm not going to walk you through it. Well, I mean, I'm hoping to vote to accept it, so. We can vote to accept, accept it. We can't reject it, so we have to accept it. Figure that one out. I already have one. Right um, All that we're determining right now is we accept it, and if it needs a public um, hearing, hearing or not, right? Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, that's all. I, in order to go through it, this is a complicated project. This is taking what we approved on Russell Road. Um, oh, the corner up by the, where they do the car show right, by Mark's right. Auto Parts. Um, and adding to it or expanding it. So they got more land, another parcel got added or something? Yeah, well, that's the, no, they didn't add a parcel. They just in, increased in, uh, the, the activities. And it goes... In the, it goes close to the wetlands, but it doesn't go around. Uh, and it's like, uh, no, no. Well, here are wetlands. Yeah, no, that's no. not. It, this is going to have a lot of detail. I, I personally think we should just accept it, and then next meeting we'll dig into it. They can be here and explain. Except it. it, no need for a public hearing. We don't know. I don't. No. I don't know. I. You're suggesting not. I don't know. Have you looked at it at least twenty minutes? I, I haven't. No. All right. But, but I, the, unless you are going to take the time to independently review this between now and the next meeting, nothing is going to change between now and the next meeting. Right. You're yeah. going to be presented with the plan and have to determine then. Right. The only thing that will have happened is we will have lost thirty days. Right. So is, do you want to take a minute to go through the plans now to determine if hearing is necessary? I mean, they are building stuff right up against the wetlands. Wait a minute. Can I have all your dogs for a minute? Okay, this is the... Uh, I love it. Uh, this is on sheet five of 10. Grading and erosion control plan. Let's see. Here's so the, the wetlands are the black. 
this, this is the, the so inner going, wetlands. So they're going right up to the wetlands well, the detention basin. We also have a flow from this path or a pond through the, this is standard through it the sits in here. Yeah, and then comes and out the here. Flows, it goes out. Yeah. But All mostly right. it sits in here and goes into here the Here it is. This is we have a holding pond. Now the details of the pond, I'm not sure. I didn't get into, but it drains. Here's the outlet, and here is the, the boundary the of the wetlands. Well. There's only up and to you impacts, no wetland impacts. Boundary of the tight against the wetland. The wetland. The wetland. Mm -hmm. Of the wetland. Yeah. Now, since the um, I would say the wetlands will be. We do have we we do have one sort of alternative. Since this project, we had considerable public interest in it, even though the wetlands was not with not it. not really a problem. But we had people here. We could say we'll accept it, and due to public interest, we'll have a public hearing. That way, we don't have to sit here and argue or talk about is it an impact or not. I would agree with that. Agree. Is there, there any? Is there any? Okay, you okay that we can jump to a hoop? Or? All right, that makes sense to me. We're legal, right? Oh, so our next meeting will be a public hearing. Correct. So they're not losing 30. So could we also approve it at the next meeting? Yes. Okay, good. But we have to address it next meeting. Okay. Is it or you know, do we have a problem or not? Whether we have the public hearing has been decided. Yeah. It gets us off the hook on that thing. But yeah. getting what, what's the impact of this? And I am I'll be willing to bet you we're gonna have some uh, people this is back with the crystal um yeah. people uh, crystal lane people. Okay. Now okay, I'll yeah. make a motion yeah. that Let's see, how are we going to say this? That we accept CC 2406. 2406. And uh, we hold a public, hear, uh, public hearing for public interest. Okay? All right. Yes. yes. I second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. All right. Do you guys want to hold on to those, or you want us to take them back for the next meeting? I want to hold on to them. No, no, I want to take them and study them. I mean, this is not trivial. But how I have given up assuming, so I'm just going to ask. <laughs> how, how do we make sure that the rest of our board members knows there's an important package to pick up, though? You'll send something out to everyone. Yeah, I'll email anyone who wasn't at the meeting. You can't. No. If we send an email to all of the members of the board or commission indicating we got this, we need to get them to review it, it's going to be a topic of next uh, meeting, uh, we're going to have a public hearing, that email constitutes a meeting. Oh, no, don't you. I, this, this, Robin and I went on. Went, we if you on. participate in that email chain or you send it, you're correct. If she sends it, or if I send it, or if Robin sends it, and I simply say there are application materials available for pickup, that is not a meeting. All right, then okay. we do it that way. That is not ex parte ex communication in accordance with FOI. Thank you. Thank We're you. covered. I don't want to get in that trouble again. Me either. Me either. All right. <clears throat> Thank you. All right, moving right along. All right. Where'd you drop by? Um, new business, uh, old business. Um, let's see, don't we have a memo? Oh, old business, you want to handle that, Mike? There's a, there's a memo that Robin has dated April 2nd, which goes through the items on the agenda and gives you a little bit of narrative for each one. Um, so I can, I'm happy to review what it says, or you can read it if you don't want to listen. Let me to ask you this. No, we'll, we'll let it stand on its own. Let me ask you this, as far as... April 2nd. Yeah, yeah we have it. Um, as far as the Wetlands Enforcement Report on 37 Hatchet Hill Road, Evan. Yep. 
As far as the enforcement report on 37 Hatchet Hill Road, mm -hmm. okay, there was an agreement that the, the town and the owners came up with. My question is, have they done anything to start removing the stuff out of the uh, uh, wetlands? So, you look at... I have some information from Robin on this. Yeah, so you all have a copy of the consent and abatement agreement, which yes. is signed yes. between the, both parties. Um, I'm looking in here. If there are... Ba, 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 ba. And you see, I think my, my memo might answer your question. Oh, really? um, uh, are you talking about from Robin? Today we had a back and forth on this. I asked Robin what's happening with this. I thought she was on vacation. She answered me. You're that important. This commission is that important that she responded on vacation. And I can go through it if, unless you have it. Um, Okay, so I read it. This well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Answer my question, then we'll get into this. Okay. So I just answers your questions. But I'm all right, then tell okay. them. So I, I was very worried. This sounds terrible. These people are piling dirt and building a driveway with no permission. So I said, 37 Hatchet Hill Road, various violations, infilling wetland areas, no driveway crossing permits. I do not see where it is cl clearly stated in her memo that the materials must be removed from the wetland areas and how this would be done to cause the least damage. Also, there seemed to be a hint that there was contaminated fill material used, right. or was it just unknown? And this will probably be discussed at the meeting. Robin wrote, the materials will not necessarily need to be removed from the wetlands. I don't know why, but she's not here to tell us. We do not know if there are contaminate, contaminants in the soil. They are doing wetlands deline delineation now, and if they want to keep soils in the wetland, they need approval from inland wetlands. They will not. This will not be done as an application, but it is a, as a part of the enforcement order. So you, we'll never know about it. You will eventually be seeing and approving their plan. And so the, the distinction there is, the reason you don't do it as a permit is because a permit is something someone may do. You're giving them approval to do something. They may or may not do it, and they have five years or potentially 14 years to do it, according to statute. If they don't build it, you can't show up and say, do it. If you do it through this consent and abatement process, you make them do it, and you tell them when you want them to do it. Correct. So right. so you can't require a permit because then you give up your ability to force their hand. Where have we told them the time This agreement. This is that consent and abatement agreement. And so what would happen is if Robin felt that they weren't in compliance with this, she would reactivate the show cause. She would reactivate her order, which requires a show cause hearing within 10 days. Why didn't she put it in there that they have to restart? they got to give her a timeline. I think that it's based upon the fact that there's certain things that you can't say take five days. A survey and a soil scientist report, you can't say that has to be done in four days. But you got to say it's got to be started by September. I think that the, my understanding is the only reason this was signed is because they had already started the, got the requirements. She first issued the cease and correct order. Yes. And she said, I'm not going to lift it until you demonstrate progress. Because she called me and said, you're going to have an April meeting. It's yeah. going to be a show cause hearing. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, dear God, please, let's find another way. <laughs> and so she told them, unless you demonstrate progress towards compliance, I will not lift my order. They then did that. They signed this agreement. If they at any point in time demonstrate bad faith, then the order goes back into play. And 10 days later, they're in front of you. Oh, I can hardly wait. Well, the hope is we can avoid that whole thing because no, this... Can't. I mean, Robin, okay, if we've had a month since this thing was said. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows what's going on. Well, they're surveying. That's what she said. They're, they're, um... You know exactly what's going on. You have a consent and abatement agreement that indicates everything that's going on on the property. They're de delineating the wetlands. You don't really know what to do until you know the property. I didn't know they going. started doing it. They said, that letter says they have to do it. It's in, it's, it's in there. 
It's item two on actions to be taken. A report from a soil scientist regarding the wetland impacts, including impacts to the area that is called out as a potential vernal pool. That is item two on actions to be taken. To be taken. Right. That's because this is an agreement signed before the. No, 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 no. I, I agree. That's what they have to do. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for action. Have they done anything? We got. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm getting tired here of yelling and screaming how things are being handled. This doesn't make sense. I ask you a question. Have Has this ever been done before? Because. When, when you say this, what do you mean? You are taking issue with the way in which an enforcement action has been handled when it would seem like this is far more focused than any enforcement efforts taken over the last decade. That's, that's baloney. You ought to see the couple ones we had against a certain member. I'm not going to mention his name because I get in trouble for saying that. Right. Uh, where it was very explicit and nothing was done. Now, I mean... Okay, let's just let it go. If you have concerns about the way in which they've handled the, the actions pertaining to this violation, and just, I mean, they're on the record, but I, but I mean, I am not the commission's enforcement agent. I don't pen these. Mike, please. But just communicate that with Robin. These are legal documents that should, they're not being fired off willy-nilly, and, and Robin has more experience than I do even with, with handling wetlands. I don't object at all mm -hmm. about what they negotiated and what they have to do. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for, at a month, what has been done to achieve those goals. That's all I'm asking. I need to interrupt. Um, Mr. Commissioner, would I be allowed to leave? Is there any more voting going on tonight? Do you need a quorum for the rest of the night? We would need a quorum. I, I don't know that there's anything else. I mean, this is really just discussion. Yeah. Or, oh, okay. No, wait a minute. Let, let, let me just look at something here. Okay. No, go. Okay. Go. I appreciate it. Oh, no, again, thank you for coming. No, of course. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's right. Well, once she leaves, there's no, wait a minute. no quorum. To adjourn. All in favor? A motion to adjourn. All in favor. Okay. There's nothing else on the agenda. I mean, you've gone through these two okay. things. Well, okay. It's unanimous. Thank you. Those are just essentially these are the approvals that have occurred. This is a report on the approvals. So we don't need to vote on them. They're, they're no, good. they're already done. This is a report of, of of approvals that have been issued by Robin or uh, Mark. I'm not actually sure if, if they okay, share that. No, meeting is over, so you shouldn't talk about applications because that would be ex parte. But so you made your motion to adjourn? Yes. Yes. I'm going to end this. Oh, it's done. Hold on. We go home. No more.